So another common misconception that has surfaced in the media, uh, especially in the last few years, is that Bitcoin is bad for the environment and uh, Bitcoin uses too much energy. And so while there's no denying that Bitcoin mining uh, is very energy intensive, determining the, the actual environmental impact of that is actually quite difficult. So let's consider, uh, firstly, uh, global banking and the entire uh, current financial system and just how much energy that uses. So you could think about all the infrastructure required just to make all the transactions possible. Think about all the buildings that have to be built and maintained and powered. Think about the workforce and just all the commuting that is done to these buildings. And then there's security. Uh, it takes a lot of security, a lot of energy to secure this massive system. You can also take a look at gold. So gold is Bitcoin's nearest competitor. And gold mining is in fact one of the most destructive industries in the entire world. It contaminates waterways, it disrupts uh, ecosystems, it displaces communities, and it's just very, very harmful. And so there's actually been a lot of research on um, you know, comparing you know, this legacy system and gold mining to Bitcoin. And there is a, an organization based out of the University of Cambridge in the UK called the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance. And they use publicly available data to assess the environmental footprint of Bitcoin mining. And they basically concluded that Bitcoin mining is powered by as low as 20% to as high as 70% of, uh, of renewable energy. In addition to that organization, uh, there's also a, um, a lot of research um, done at ARK Invest. It's a firm based out of New York. And they found that Bitcoin actually is much more efficient than traditional banking and the financial system, uh, as well as gold mining on a, you know, on a global scale. And their data also highlights that uh, there's a lot of utility when it comes to Bitcoin mining. So for one, you can say like capturing stranded energy. So stranded energy is energy that's been produced and that it's like trapped or stranded on an energy grid. Uh, maybe there's already so much energy on the grid and it's not gonna be used or it can't get delivered to where it needs to go. And what we know about Bitcoin mining is that it's very agile, it's very uh, mobile, and it can set up pretty much anywhere. Uh, so Bitcoin miners can, can consume this strand of energy that would otherwise be wasted. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they've done a lot of research on methane emissions. So all around the world, there are abandoned uh, oil and gas wells that are leaking methane into the atmosphere. Uh, and what we've seen is a trend of, um, you know, Bitcoin miners going to these sites and using the methane to, uh, to not only power the miners, but also cap, so cap the methane so it doesn't go into the atmosphere. So this firm actually also found that there's a lot of economic incentives built into Bitcoin that is driving sustainable energy innovation. Really, this comes down to the justification of Bitcoin's energy usage and the value it provides. So Bitcoin's critics might say, well, Bitcoin is useless, uh, so why would we use energy for it? Why would we waste energy? Whereas, you know, Bitcoin's proponents say that this is a, it's a decentralized network, it's the most secure network, it's transparent, it's available to anyone, it's a faster, a better form of money, its energy usage is definitely justified and maybe even necessary. 